Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now, today I am back with an update about the 5800X 3D because there were a few things that were a bit hinky uh, with my launch day review in that I had a few problems, but I do need to uh, clarify a few points. Uh, I used the Crosshair Extreme for the original review. I did have it on the most recent BIOS and uh, I did check the um, uh, Cinebench result, which is what AMD sent me to make sure that I was within tolerance for their expected scores. And I was actually 100 points above for Cinebench R23. Um, but we noticed some uh, things in part of the B-roll that I did in that things weren't boosting correctly. And it looks like it, something may have happened midway through testing because some of my results were actually okay some of them weren't the one that uh, people were flagging a lot for good reason was far cry 6 which was showing to be very very poor for performance um, but what i have done is uh, i think now i've got some hinky problems with the crosshair extreme because we've actually got to the point with that now where it's now dependent on how it boots depends whether it actually wants to uh, show hard drives. And another thing is that the fourth dim slot now seems to be a bit hit and miss in that sometimes it will boot with uh, dims um, in there and then other times it won't. So I don't know what's going on, but I've requested an RMA with Asus. So the uh, uh, another rig that I use with a, a static AMD motherboard and processor setup is my graphics card testing system which is this here. So effectively what I've done with this is I've updated the BIOS so it now supports the 5800X 3D. I've swapped the processor in and I was doing this all in different stages to make sure that uh, there wasn't an issue with BIOSes maybe as a whole or board as a whole, but did it in very like specific steps. Anyway, I have now retested and I can tell you that the results have all gone up, but I will bring them up to the side for you. The one that a lot of you were saying should have been at the top of the graph was Far Cry 6. It's just below. But I've obviously tested the 59... Sorry. I've tested the 12900KS. But it was my 12900KS with an overclock which went above it because I actually got it running at 4.4, 4.5 on all cores. So it was that was a very kind of very healthy one. If it was stock for stock, then there was absolutely no way that the... AMD wasn't going to go to the top of the graph, but I have retested. Uh, I've linked the original review again because the original review, I have updated the graphs and you can see the new results and the old results so that you can see the difference, complete transparency. I also, I, I mean, I could take the other YouTube video down, but it's one of those ones where are people going to watch it twice? I really don't know. I'll leave both there. I will put some uh, text in uh, there and I will also add some cards to pop up to make sure people know that there is another video and there is an updated written review on the website. So things did, uh, performance did go up. One of the other things that did go up because the boost went up, the temperatures went up by a lot. Uh, and then the power draw went up by a little bit as well. But it does make it a much better prospect than we were first looking at because that boost is actually fairly healthy. All cores, I was seeing at least 4.3 gigahertz, but I was actually getting 4.35 a lot as well. And uh, I'm not sure whether it was the Asus board itself, but it's obviously meant to go up to 4.5, 4.4, um, sorry, but I was seeing 4.45, sometimes 4.5. And if that was the Asus motherboard pushing things that little bit further, it was actually still doing it. Not sure whether it should or it shouldn't have done, but I was getting very, very healthy results. As you can see, Blender is better, Cinebench is better, all the games are considerably better. Far Cry pretty much topped the graph, and like I said, it was only really that screaming high clock score from the i9 uh, that didn't, but in, in its kind of defence, AMD's defence, with that manual overclock on that i9, I had to run the uh, H150i with the 3000 RPM Noctua server fans on max just to keep it at about 90 degrees. It was not livable with off-the-shelf parts. You would need custom water cooling to even consider being able to run that at those speeds all the time. So that's something that you do need to keep in mind. So the AMD 
it's still not quite as good as the 5800X, but gaming in sort of like uh, multitasking workloads or multi-threaded workloads would be a better way to put it, but is a much better prospect than we it first looked. Also, gaming significantly better with that extra boost, but as you'll see with you know some of them, we've we even the old results looked good. So adding in those clock speeds makes them just that oh puts like a little cherry on the top. Now I could just have published this on the website, but I wanted to be completely transparent and also I value my testing, which is why I went back, had a very long chat with uh, AMD, and then we just I think I've just got some problems with that board sadly, which is why I've requested an RMA and it's gonna go off and hopefully be repaired or replaced, I don't know. But thankfully, I had another board that I'm using on all the time uh, and it meant that I could swap in very quickly and get things retested and get you guys updated. So I hope you uh, uh, are thankful for that. I'm not sure whether the, the video will, or the new video will get many more views, but if you do see people uh, commenting on the other one, and you can send them to this one and we can hopefully keep each other up to date. And uh, yes, my apologies uh, for falling short and not noticing the first time around. But this is the tiniest one with a very quick, to the point, much better scores update. And uh, just so that you're aware as well, and I'll pop some of these up. I should have said this at the beginning. With the original results, I, I take a screenshot for every single test I ever do. So. Um, I've always got a reference point to go back to. Uh, I always run some like uh, CPU Zs and look at clock speeds and boosting and that board was boosting at the start. So I don't know what's happened halfway through. It's a bit of a, um, it's, it's just one of those things. I can honestly say I don't have very many hardware failures uh, here. A few hard drives over the years few NVMEs that have gone, but I've never had a board go skewiff in the middle of testing, sadly. But at least we noticed it between us, collective, PC master race, PC family. We got it retested and now we've got the results that the processor deserved. So I will leave that with you, let you diverge. We can all discuss it in the comments. Don't forget you can go to the OC3D website for the full review and look at all of the graphs because everything's got retested. But for now at least, this is the tiniest one with another video for you out. Ding!